The Hadley Learning Community is a £60 million PFI development in Telford, Shropshire. An extended school with integrated primary and secondary phases, it's a cutting-edge facility designed to be the school of tomorrow, today. Four years in the making, the HLC is seen as a blueprint for the Building Schools for the Future scheme, developed in an ambitious partnership between an LEA and a construction consortium led by Interserve. The first part to open was the secondary phase, with the primary phase starting up in buildings to be demolished when the new facilities are ready in January 2007. Bringing together new staff, new students and new technology presented challenges during the first couple of weeks at the HLC. It's like all your Christmases come together, because obviously you've got every facility you could wish for. Can we just print a timetable which gets them to lessons now? If we can just get them to where they are today and we'll reprint the timetables for tonight. Just tell me I can print the timetable for the next ten minutes. No, <laughs> they can't. There isn't a blemish on the walls, there's not a mark anywhere you will look after this building. When I'm in front of them, you know, I'm tough talking and, you know, I'm raising the bar. The HLC is in a district of Telford badly hit by the loss of manufacturing industry. The construction technique was simple but effective. A concrete frame was clad with textured panels, doing away with the need for hundreds of bricklayers. The circular design concept means it's a campus under one roof, rather than having buildings scattered around the site. Teachers and pupils can circulate freely, vital for a cross-phase curriculum. And teachers had a major say in the construction. The principal, Dr Jill Etuff, was brought in 18 months before it opened to help design the place. The benching's going to go there, then we're going to have the... It's coming out like that, isn't it? Altogether, 740 yeah, rooms had to be checked like and signed off. Need to re really look at that. Check. Check. Check door. Jill took responsibility for the design of the basic classrooms, which she kept traditional in character. I've basically gone for a generic basic classroom, which is like this, so that all the classrooms are the same and then one layout to the labs. But very much it's been something that I've made the majority of decisions on. You know, I made these decisions 12 months ago, and here, you know, here it is. Paul Topping, head of secondary, worked for six months designing a radical new curriculum for the HLC and the complex two-week timetable needed to deliver it. Can you just alter these groups here, because I've got a spare I've lesson. I've got a spare lesson if you want. I'd like to keep that spare just for a moment. Built up with a vast data set from several feeder schools, Paul had to allocate scores of teaching groups. He had a very clear idea of how a curriculum can be delivered. There are some uh, misconceptions, I think, about the curriculum, that it is very, very rigid and that you have very little flexibility. In fact, in Key Stage 3, for example, there's quite a deal of flexibility in how you can deliver Key Stage 3. You don't need to deliver it over three years if you don't want to. You have a lot of flexibility in how you can timetable it, how you can staff it, the hours of the day, those kinds of things. And there's going to be further flexibility, I think. Although in old buildings, the new primary phase of the HLC would still have to open at the same time as the secondary phase. It's going to be a difficult challenge for us, but we can't afford to, to, to sit back on our laurels and, and wait until January. We've got to be up and running as one organisation from September, and I'm determined to do that as, as well as we possibly can. In the final 12 months before the grand opening, the leadership team got through a huge amount of work, designing a curriculum, choosing uniform and recruiting staff. The builders too had their work cut out. It was a complex building program with tight deadlines to ensure the HLC opened on time and on budget. 24 hours before the secondary school opens, it's coffee and croissants for the staff on their final training day. The leadership team called everyone together for a final briefing. 
Today is the first day that we've had the whole team together, so we've got 85 staff here. And uh, it's been that sort of scene setting, you know, this is where we're going, these are the expectations I have of you, this is the vision and ethos of the Hadley Learning Community. Okay, good morning everybody, welcome to your new school. Good morning. Good morning. How are you feeling? Yeah. Nervous? Yeah. Paul Topping will be leading a team of more than 100 teachers and support staff. He explained how the timetable he'd spent so much of the summer refining would be distributed. You should have received in the summer from me uh, a copy of your timetable as it will appear on CMIS eventually. CMIS, for those people who aren't aware, is a software that Health and Read can use, which is different from just about everywhere else in the country who use SIMS. We're also trying by the end of today to get the seven and eight student timetables printed out so we can hand those out to students tomorrow. Teachers were pupils for a day, getting training in how to use the new online learning environment. Every time you see a little blue bit of text, they are the hyperlinks. Faculty heads briefed their teams for the last time, and staff got to play with the new high-tech equipment they'd be using. Ah, that's it, you've got to be on the outside. Got to be on the end. That's it. All very exciting. Over here we've got all my new drawers, which are all labelled up lovely. Brand new books for every single class. Computer for the kids to work on in class. But also, I found out the other day that we've got 30 laptops for every faculty. So instead of booking an ICT room, we can have, our class can have the laptops. I think I'm going to keep my classroom in this layout, although Paul says we're free to change anything we want to. And then over here I've got my workstation, my own computer, my own phone, which I'm pretty excited about as well. It's been great today. The most important thing for me today is that there's been a really positive staff climate. I mean, you're never quite sure until the staff are in the building and getting their preparation complete um, as to exactly what the mood's going to be. But it's been really upbeat and, you know, everybody has been up for it tomorrow and ready. And, and actually, people seem really relaxed, which is terrific, really, at the end of such a long planning phase. September the 5th, 2006, the secondary phase of the HLC is open for business. Eight o'clock and Jill Etuff, the principal, arrives. And the early birds are here. That's the internal and external yeah, masters. That's what we discussed earlier, Jill. Jay, can you pick up the key from Richard for the gate to unlock the pupil gate when you go out? Assistant Vice Principal Dave Bowyer has the honour of opening up. Paul Topping's ready to face his first day as head of secondary. Who wants to be first through to the new school? Morning. Teachers check in and the facilities management team are ready to go. Today it's just years seven and eight that are in school. Oh, they're prompt. They're prompt. You won't be allowed yes, in the your building ties too, unless guys. your tie's looking like mine. Do you want me to do it for you? No, well, do it yourself quickly then, please. New school, new rules. Start as you mean to go on. That all-important first assembly. Good morning, everybody. You're a very special year group for us because it will be what you achieve over the next five years that will be a measure of the success of the Hadley Learning Community. Jill is very clear about the behaviour she expects from the new pupils. She doesn't pull her punches. So I'm going to talk about respect. And respect for the building is very much at the top of my list. There isn't a blemish on the walls. There's not a mark anywhere. Chewing gum is completely banned. And that's how I want it to stay. And I do mean that. You will look after this building. Laying down the law is essential on the first day of term. If students need to know where they stand. They need to know, you know, you're firm, you're decisive, that you have high expectations of them, and you have to, yeah, you have to come across as a, you know, don't mess with me, guys. And they then know, you know, and you only get, you know, you've got to set this in being too nice to them, you know. That's not my job, really. I've got lots of staff and lots of people looking after them, but they know, need to know when I'm in front of them. You know, I'm tough talking and, you know, I'm raising the bar. Break time and 
pupils use the forum for the first time. Just 200 metres away in the old Hadley Juniors playground, celebration time as the primary phase is open too. Like Jill Etuff, Erica Aston's making sure children are clear about what she expects of them and what the new systems for managing behaviour are. We're actually at an advantage in a lot of ways being here first because we can get those systems in place. It's expectations is a lot of it. Mm. How do you come into assembly? How do you address people that are leading the assembly? How do you dismiss from assembly? We need to get those things right and then when we move into the new building in January it'll be fabulous because they will know exactly how we expect them to walk into assembly, walk off the playground, walk out. So they're not coping with a new management team, new staff, new structures and a new building. Right, this lesson we're going to have a little look at diary writing. While children settle down in the primary school, in the new secondary building, the admin team are making final preparations for lessons to get underway. We're just trying to get the teaching groups accurate to make sure all the children know where to go, print off their timetables and pass them to them. That's it now, pull it off. Pupils are getting to know their tutors and making sure their uniforms look their best. But lessons can't start until they get their individual timetables. George, that's right, yeah. There's a problem. IT gremlins kick in. When data from the schools which closed down to make way for the HLC was transferred to the new system, data files got corrupted and CMIS, the software that runs the timetable, cannot produce accurate printouts for the students. All the work that was done has been lost. So we're having to re-enter and every single child has to have for them their timetable put in so that we can print off the timetable. I hope we get it sorted this afternoon. We've got somebody coming down, but you know, we're just struggling. Poor Topping realises it could be a critical problem. By now, lessons should be underway, but pupils have to stay put in their tutor groups. So we just can't get the thing to print. Can't you just get a print? It doesn't, it, no, because there's big gaps everywhere. So I can't. How do you mean big gaps? That the data's all incorrect in the database. Uh, I mean, I'm just frazzled. <laughs> Can we get a message around to say, go to tutor rooms then for straight after lunch? Give timetables out, go to period four. And provided we can get timetables out, yeah. Well, we've got to. You know, we have to do it. There's no choice. Um, right. And if we can't do it, we have to go around and say, right, you kids go to English. We'll sort you out from there. Or we'll put them in the engineering gallery or whatever. Hi, Gareth. The LEA sends specialists to help sort out the problem with the CMIS software. But they have to give Paul some very bad news. Just tell me I can print the timetable for the next 10 minutes. No. <laughs> Tutors have had to keep pupils occupied for more than two hours now. Time for some word games. Right, Elliot. L. L for Leopard. I was saying to Paul, even if we haven't got the timetables printed out for the next lesson, we can just have to tell the kids where to go. And we've got to do something. Yes, but the tutors can't keep them. We haven't got a master copy of your timetable. <laughs> Paul's got a copy, but it's starting to look a bit dog-eared. The issue isn't with the timetable, it's, it's with the kids in the teaching groups. For Jill Etuff, the students have been out of lessons for long enough. Can we just print a timetable which gets them to lessons now? And if we can just get them to where they are today and we'll reprint the timetables for tonight. Yeah, right. OK, can we print them? Incomplete timetables will have to go out. Tutors will have to fill in the gaps. Just say we move in five ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Dave Bowyer gives out teaching group lists to curriculum leaders. Get things moving. I'll bring down. 7x to here. Okay, right, room one. Go and line up that side there for me. Yeah. Right, so group right down to the bottom. Do you know where you're going? Yeah. Good. What's amazing is there's been virtually no glitch in the building. You think with all these children in, there would be something major that might not work. And the buildings work perfectly and beautifully. The children have been fantastic. And the one bit that's let us down is a bit that we, we probably had the least control over. So there's a story there, isn't there?
La classe, s'il vous plaît, asseyez-vous. But it will never happen again. <laughs> Finally, crisis over, lesson start. Bon, la classe, pour commencer, s'il vous plaît, levez-vous.